Hello everyone! Today, we'll be looking at the sun. Well, not directly. We should never look at the sun with our eyes. Our eyes are extremely sensitive, and it can be really dangerous for us to stare right into the sun. But how do scientists know so much about the sun if they can't even look at it? This is what we'll be exploring in today's activity. We will be learning how scientists project the sun's image onto a screen and study its characteristics over time all without ever looking directly at it. Now, let's take a step back. What is the sun, really? The sun is a giant flaming ball of gas. Unlike Earth, it doesn't really have a solid surface. Now, the sun is made up of three layers, but the most important one that we want to focus on is the first layer, or the photosphere. Big word, I know. But let's break it down. The photosphere is the first visible layer of the sun that we see as sunlight. It usually has a temperature of around 5,000 degrees Celsius, which may seem like a lot, but that's actually much cooler than the temperature of the sun at its center. Now, I say the photosphere is usually around 5,000 degrees Celsius because there are regions where it is much cooler about a thousand degrees cooler. These regions are called sunspots. Now, because sunspots have a cooler temperature, they look like darker regions on the sun's surface. Now, don't get me wrong, sunspots are still extremely bright, almost as bright as a full moon, but they're just not as bright compared to the hotter regions of the sun. These cooler regions on the sun can also be gigantic almost as big as Earth. You can actually observe these darker regions on the sun without looking at it directly, of course. In this activity, you will be projecting the image of the sun using a pinhole viewer to observe sunspots. Excited? Me too. Let's get started. For this experiment, you will need a shoebox, if your cardboard box is thin, you'll have an easier time cutting it. A cereal box works perfectly too. Aluminum foil, a pencil, a ruler, any kind of tape, a sewing pin or a push pin, any kind of pin that you have, scissors, and a white sheet of paper. Now first, we're going to start by creating a small square on the side of our shoebox. Now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure two centimeters. Now I'm going to use my scissors to cut the lines that I've made. I'm just gonna poke a hole so my scissors can go through. Okay, so now that we made our two by two square, I cut out a piece of aluminum foil that is big enough to fit on top of the square, like this. And now all we have to do is just tape this aluminum foil onto the square. Now I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to poke a hole at the center of the square that I made. I'm just going to poke a hole right there. Now on the other side, we're going to cut a three centimeter by 10 centimeter rectangle. Please be careful when using the scissors. Next, when our hole is made, we're going to cut out a white sheet of paper that will fit across the rectangle and we're just going to tape it on. Now we're going to flip our box to one side and we're going to cut another piece of the box off. This will make it easier to view your projection image. And there we go. That's our pinhole viewer. Now, let's test it out. Okay, so we're going to take our pinhole viewer and the aluminum foil side with the pinhole, 
will face the sun, and you have to face it at the sun without looking at it. So, I know the sunlight's coming from there, so I'm going to face my aluminum foil that way, and keep moving it around until you see. And there we go. The image that's projected is actually the image of the sun. Now, don't be too disappointed at how small the image is. This is because you need a really long box to project a really big image of the sun. Now this is a really long cardboard box. I did the same thing that I did with my shoe box. I put an aluminum foil with a pinhole on one side and a white sheet on the other side. Now, because of its length, you can see that the projected image of the sun is so much bigger than what we saw in the shoe box. So yeah, the length of the cardboard box matters. Now, if you have a really long cardboard box that you don't need anymore, you can do the same thing that you did with your shoe box and project an even bigger image of the sun. Pretty cool, right? Now, there are many other things you can do with your pinhole glue. For example, the pinhole that you made Try making it a little bit bigger. See what happens to your image. Is it blurrier or is it sharper? You can also see what happens to your image when the sun is passing through clouds or when it's passing through some trees. This pinhole viewer is also perfect for viewing a solar eclipse. A solar eclipse occurs when the earth, moon, and the sun are all aligned and the sun's light cannot reach earth because the moon is blocking it. You can use your pinhole viewer to view the solar eclipse safely. Now that we know what sunspots are and have seen them in action, I bet you're wondering how they really form. Now, to answer this question, we will have to think about magnetic fields. Remember how I said that the sun does not have a solid surface like Earth? On the sun, the gas molecules are always moving around spinning and turning. Now these gas molecules have charges, positive and negative. This is what makes up the magnetic field of the sun. Simply think of the sun as a giant bar magnet. Because these gas molecules are always moving around, there are times when the magnetic field is so quiet and other times it is so strong. Now sunspots are regions on the sun's surface where the magnetic field is extremely strong. It is so strong that it stops the heat at the center of the sun from reaching the surface of the sun. This is why sunspots, which are located at the surface of the sun, are so much cooler. Because these sunspots have such strong magnetic fields, they're like a ticking bomb. They can burst resulting in solar flares. You may have seen images of these before, and now you know how they formed. All this activity from the sun also affects Earth. Solar flares and the sun's magnetic field can cause auroras, or the northern lights, which you may have seen before. Now that's pretty cool. Now, here's something even cooler. Ancient scientists used sun projections and pinhole viewers to figure out how the sun moves. They used sun projections to keep track of what the sunspots looked like each day. This helped them see how the sunspots change over time. This is actually how scientists figured out that the sun moves on its axis. Now that's pretty cool. 